Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the People's Champion, your host, the Hut, and we are back here at the Baseball Hut too. I hope you like this video and subscribe. So we're going to be talking a lot about the offseason on this channel. I wonder why. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for not showing up. Thank you. Thanks for not showing up. It's the New York Mets. But we're going to talk a lot about free agency and trades. Oh, I can't wait to get to the offseason. We're going to be very busy here at the Baseball Hut and, and this channel as well. Um, so from CBSports.com, MLB free agent rankings. Who rounds out early look at top 10, top 10 behind Shohei Otani? All right, let's skip to the chase. Shohei Otani, number one, two-way player, Los Angeles Angels. Have you heard about this guy? Are you sure about this guy? I don't know about this guy. Might be the game's best kept secret. Hits and pitches and does them both better than most do either. Okay, we'll drop the shtick. Well, I won't. I'm going to keep going. Everyone knows about Otani and everyone knows that he's going to get paid this offseason. Various front office sources recently predicted to CBS that his upcoming contract will top the $500 million mark. That may end up being conservative if the league's high rollers get into the bidding war. Uh, I don't expect the New York Mets to be doing that now. The owner said that they're not going to be diving into the free agency this offseason on that in this deep of a water. And I don't think he's going to come to the East Coast now. Maybe the Yankees will talk to him. I know the Yankees wanted to sign him a few years ago. Uh, the Cubs will talk to him. The, the Rangers will talk to him. Uh, but the California teams are probably the teams that are going to talk to him. I think there's a better than 50-50 chance he re-signs with the Angels. And the Angels... They they made all these moves. They made all these moves to play, you know, ha, you know, give themselves a chance to get the postseason, and they played terrible since the, the trade deadline. And he has not played well. Shohei Otani has not played well since the All Star break. And in fact, he had to leave a game early because he had cramps in his hand because he was pitching. He he has not come up big over the last two weeks, which is interesting since he's talked about wanting to be on a team that's a winning team. That's how it goes in baseball sometimes. It's a very strange sport at times. Number two, Matt Chapman, third baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. Third baseman with this kind of power and defensive ability are hard to find. Chapman's on pace to clear the 200 ILSO threshold for the sixth time in seven tries. And he could well win his fourth career gold love award. We'll grant this his swing and miss tendencies are concerning. He's already on the wrong side of his 30th birthday. Some team is going to pony up anyway. He's a very strange offensive player. He strikes out a lot. I don't think he's ever driven 100 runs. He hits home runs. But he's he's probably the best defensive third baseman in the game, if not in the American League. But I, you know, any team got to be very careful giving him a contract. Give him three years. Because at some point that that offense is going to drop it's going to drop off the table in a big way. He's a guy you, you got to be very very careful with. In my in my view. I do know the one thing, the Mets could use a third baseman. But I don't know if they're going to go in that order, especially for a guy that can't really hit on a consistent basis. Number three, Blake Schnell, left-handed pitcher of the San Diego Padres. Schnell isn't for everyone. He's wild. He's prone to extreme performance swings. And even at his best, he's usually departing in or before the sixth inning. When he's on, though, a few other starting pitchers can match him when it comes to missing bats and suppressing quality of contact. There's probably a non-zero chance he goes full Ali Perez during his next contract. That's not going to prevent the team from de deeming the Royal to be worth that risk. That's an insult comparing him to Ali Perez. Uh, the Mets gave Ali, just to reference, the Mets gave Ali Perez a big long-term contract at 2007. He couldn't finish it with the Mets. They had, to give, they had to sort of eat the money and got him the hell out of here. He was a disaster. Then he became like a, a middle reliever and a lefty specialist. I don't know how he was able to last in the game as long as he was. He was about as bad of a lefty as I've seen in a long time. Ed, well, I don't, now, the interesting thing about Schnell, uh, uh, I would expect that... I wouldn't be surprised he went to the Cubs. The Cubs are looking to come back at some point. They're having a good year now, trying to get the postseason. That's a guy I could see going there. I could see him going there, definitely. Number four, Ed Rod Eduardo Rodriguez of the Tigers. Now, he had a chance... He had a chance to go to the Dodgers, and I wonder what the 
you know, the response is going to be towards him because he didn't go to a winning team. Teams kind of walk away from players that don't want to be involved in a pennant race. But he's going to get a lot of teams on him. The Dodgers will want to sign him. They'll talk to him. The Rangers will talk to him. Maybe he goes back to the Red Sox. Who knows? You know, maybe the Yankees talk to him. I don't know what the hell is going on with the Yankees. The Mets won't talk to him. The Mets are, are trying to do different things right at the moment. Number five, Cody Bellinger. He is he is basically the fool's gold of these free agents. Bellinger is going to experience a fascinating free free agency if he does indeed find himself in the open market. His statistics this season have been phenomenal despite some puzzling ball tracking rates. He has a $25 million mutual option with the Cubs. We'll see if he, he does that. I'm sure the Cubs might bring him back. They didn't move him. be interesting to see what his market is. The New York Yankees should be all in on him. But do not give him a four or five year deal. He'll, he'll burn. He burned, he burned the Cubs. He burned the Dodgers. Dodgers don't make too many mistakes with players. Speaking of which, Julio Urias. Urias has a couple of things working against him. He missed more than a month with a hamstring issue, meaning he won't get that third and second 30-plus start season. He also shown slightly reduced velocity and is sporting a higher ERA than he usually does. He still does a great job of aiding barrels and walks, but we suspect his price will be a little lower than we anticipated. There are going to be a lot of teams on him. The Dodgers don't want to sign him. Look for the Mariners don't want to sign him. The New York Mets might pony. So this thing about the Mets... They didn't want to really give any kind of like big free agent contracts to these older pitchers, but he's not old. He's 26. That's a guy I'm sure they'll talk. They'll think about targeting. The Rangers will definitely target him. Uh, the Cubs will target him, no doubt. Number seven, Lucas Giolito. He's now with the Angels. Even with some recent turbulence, Giolito has done well to cor- course correct as the last years on the performance by upping his reliance upon his slider. I can see him resigning with the Angels. I can see him going to the Dodgers. I think he'll stay out in California. Maybe the Giants. Definitely. I don't see him coming back to, the, to anywhere and out past the West. Aaron Nola. In the Phillies. We understand any skepticism folks may have about him entering the winter. Strikeout rate is down. His walk rate is up. And he's allowing harder contact on average than at nearly any other point in his career. We still think some team will look at Nola's track record and roll the dice. Especially if they convince themselves that his bloated home run total rate is certain to regress. And if he goes to a bigger ballpark, say like City Field, it'll probably go down. Keep that in mind that the, the ballpark's a big big factor. I can see the New York Mets talking to him. The Giants talking to him. The Blue Jays wanting to sign him. Maybe the Yankees. The Cubs. Possibly the Red Sox. Maybe Houston. This guy, this guy is, an, and he's an innings eater. He, he, th- he throws a lot of innings. He pitches a lot of innings. That's a guy that you want on your team. Number nine, Sonny Gray of the Twins. Gray's going to be a difficult pitch to place this winter. He's compiled some quality seasons throughout his career, but he doesn't stand out in any particular way. His strikeout rate has declined from the. I, he should stay in the Midwest. That's a guy he should probably resign with the Twins. Maybe he'll go to the Cubs. Maybe. Uh, this is not an East Coast guy. We know that. He pitched with the Yankees. It didn't go well there. That's not a guy that... Um, and he's 34 years old. So, and according to CBS Sports, it says he's going to be looking for a Chris Bassett contract. Chris Bassett, I think, is better than him at this rate. But uh, Sonny Gray is going to have a very small market. Just based off the fact that he didn't pitch well in New York. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. It's, it's not easy to play here, and if you don't play well here, they kind of like hurt you a little bit. And at his age, and he's had some injuries, he had injuries last year. Number 10, Jameer Candelario, third baseman from the Chicago Cubs. Candelario is en route to notch a well above average offensive season for the third time in four tries. That counts for something, even if he doesn't excel in any one area. He's not going to threat 300 or 30 homers, and your opinion on his defensive work may vary. There are only so many skilled infields available this winter, however, and we need that he's proven he's capable enough with the stick to merit a multi-year contract. Hmm. This is like the poor man's version of Matt Chapman. And he can play first. He's been playing first a lot for the Cubs. So he's got a little versatility to his game. Maybe the New York Mets go in on this. Maybe they give him a two, three year contract. I could definitely see the Mets doing this. Just to get a guy that can hold the fort. 
till they figure out who the hell they're going to have at third base in the long term. The Angels will be in on him. I know the Angels tried to get him in the offseason. Although they have Anthony Rendon. who has been like the biggest disastrous uh, contracts in the last 20 years out there. Uh, I could see him going to any number of places. Or even staying with the Cubs. But you know, let me know what you think about this video. And of course, please subscribe to the Baseball Hut too. And I'll see you later.